island of Boracay in the central Philippines with its powdery white sand and picture-perfect view of the sea has become a favorite among local and foreign tourists. In 2012, Travel and Leisure magazine named it the world's best island. Few would disagree. Beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. Para sa akin, hindi naman ito madumi. Makita nyo naman, yung wangin, maputi. Tapusin mo yung problema sa Boracay. I do not... But Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte disagrees. He says Boracay, with its uncontrolled development, has become a cesspool. In other words, filthy. And according to an interagency task force formed to assess Boracay's environmental health, it is. The biggest found was the illegal discharge of uh, wastewater into the ocean, into the waters. Uh, it has caused a lot of concern because the levels that we have seen in terms of particles is at 18,000 uh, E. coli, coliform, when the average allowed is 400. So is it a cesspool? Yes, the, especially in that area where the discharge is happening, definitely. That area is not where most tourists are. It's on another side of the island called Bulabog Beach, more popular for kite surfing and other water sports. Ken Nakor owns a kite surfing school here. He says he can't say President Duterte was merely exaggerating. I know the water. If I can send the smell in Facebook, the smell of the bulabog, only now we can see the photo, the video, what's coming out. If we can se send by Facebook the smell, the smell. They will see. So you've seen the water, the black water? Yeah, we've seen it. And then not only me, there's only lots of foreigners are here too. Huh? So as you can see, there is a long steel pipe here. It's actually connected all the way to the other side of the island where most of the hotels and restaurants and other establishments are. Now those establishments that do not have their own wastewater treatment not connected also to the island's wastewater treatment plant. Their wastewater, which consists of different kinds of waste, human waste, detergent, and what have you, they all end up here. This is likely the cesspool President Duterte had described in his speech. But given that most of the pollution comes from businesses on what's known as White Beach, President Duterte has ordered the entire island of Boracay closed for tourism until at least October 2018. The recommendation is to do really the big work, the bulk work in 60 days. Because Secretary Teo has said that if those big works can be done in 60 days, we can already partially open slowly some parts of the island. And when you say big work? The upgrade of the uh, uh, water and discharge lines, the demolition of the 25 plus 5 easement, those who have crossed that, and the clearing up of uh, structures built on uh, uh, wetland and forest land. The short-term impact could be damaging. Boracay contributes to some 20% of all tourism revenue of the Philippines. In 2017, more than 2 million people who visited the island spent more than a billion U.S. dollars. Tens of thousands rely on Boracay's tourism activities for their livelihood. Now, as demolition work has begun, they're bracing for the worst. Here, yeah, this is my land soon. That's it. This is this is what's gonna be left of your yeah, establishment? I'm, yeah, after working since I was 22 years old. I'm 39 now. Yeah. I've been dreaming this building to build for many years. And yeah. then after 15 days, six months, your dream is gone. And you were never made aware that where you were building was supposedly illegal. Yeah. You were never made aware of that. All I'm aware is about we follow the rules from LG, LGU and then we follow the, the measurement of the first building here. 
which we are talking about the seven stone. The national government says it is leaving no stone unturned in its crackdown. Local officials will be made accountable as well. But the ones bearing the brunt right now are the business owners and their employees. Everyone, including those who've complied with environmental laws. We cannot sleep right now. We're terrorized, like scared what's going to happen in the island. Like my worker, they cannot sleep. Where They're thinking where they're going to get their money to pay their kids. I'm talking about mine only. Huh? What about the big, big hotel have working there, like many workers? Employees of this resort, for instance. West Cove, which was built on a forest land, was one of the first to get closed down. In fact, the local government has been trying to shut down its operations since it opened in 2009. But the management of the resort has managed to resist. Until now. I'm still hoping that we could still get justice in spite of it all. Because um, when you review our documents, we, we did everything to, to comply them. All the requirements from the national government and requirements and permits that needed by the local uh, government. E even though technically you're, you've been operating illegally? Yes. Um, um, illegally in the sense that um, we were asking them to process our municipal permits and they don't want to give it to us. So what will you do as a businessman? Many of the resort's employees stuck around as the management fought closure orders. Now they're faced with the prospect of losing their jobs with no other opportunities available in Boracay. Isa sa mga iniisip namin or worry namin is paano po yung pag-aaral ng mga bata. So kailangan bang ilipat talaga muna namin sila? Anong, kasi dito sila nag-aaral sa Boracay. So kailangan bang ilipat muna namin sila? O, tapos syempre, gaya sa amin ngayon sa West Cove, wala kaming ano, operation. So, magkakasahod pa ba kami sa susunod na mga sahuran? So, paano yung pang-enroll namin since ito lang yung source of income namin? Ano, ano ang naging reaction mo nung una mo na dinig na sinabi ni President Duterte na Boracay is a cesspool. Kailangan isara natin ang Boracay. Ano yung naging reaction nung una? Una, maganda kasi iayusin. Pero bandang huli na mga balita na ganun pala mangyari. So, ang sabi na ayusin sana, pero iba pa rin ang ano eh. May term pa na apiktado rin ng lahat na hotel. So, hmm. ganun na uh, umuri, mauri pag uh, no. Pero, agree kayo na kailangan ayusin ng Boracay? O, agree naman ako sir. So, basta sa tama lang. Agree naman ako. Basta sa tama lang ako. Ano Ayos. yung, pero wag sana isara yung Boracay? Oo, wag sana isara. Kasi maraming tao apiktado. The fact is, most Boracay stakeholders agree that Boracay needs to be restored to its pristine state. No one agrees with this more than the island's first settlers, the Aki tribe. Sa totoo lang sira, totoo lang. Nang ano, pagkadinig namin, abala din kami sabi ko, ay ano ba? Ay, sabi namin, mabuti nga yan. Ah, kasi yung sa atin ay kinuha pa, sana ibalik i... Hayaan na lang yan sa atin, sa atin, atin talaga para magawa natin din ng plano kung ano. Puraka, in fact, is an ati word that means white sand. Delsa Husto, one of the tribe's leaders, remembers a Boracay that they had all to their own. Aboy maganda dahil lahat-lahat ang makikita namin dito, punong kahoy lang. Maganda kahit ngayon sa beach ka magpunta, bo, nakakasilaw yung ano namin, buhangin. Hindi yan matingin-tingin lang, tapos maano yan, mag-apak pa, pinakamalambot apakan mo sa noong mga panahon. May, may feeling ba kayo na inagawan kayo? Ay, oo, gilang pa man, sir, dahil kagaya dyan sa prime beach kami, ay dyan lang kami sa baybay katulog. Tapos ay sa biglaan. Simpre dali-dali lang. Ay, ang lungkot-lungkot ang ate, sir. But there was nothing they could do to stop the tourism boom. As years passed, they got more and more marginalized in their own land. 
And even as the national government had given them more than two hectares of land, they've only been able to occupy a fraction of it. So basically all this land that you see around me, some 2.1 hectares worth, was awarded to the Ati tribe of Barakay back in 2011. But it was only in that portion of the land, a very small fraction where they were able to put up their houses. The rest of the land is now being occupied by non-Ati people, mainly for business purposes. But the irony is that the Atis now rely on Boracay's tourism industry as well. Some of them work in hotels, bars and restaurants, many in construction. While the Ati village itself has become a tourist attraction. Ako kasi sir, grade trail ako dahil noong mga panahon, di alam ng mga magulang ko kung ano ang gamit ng mga batang eskwila. Ayun, may mga underwear pero ako noon Hanggang nakapunta ako ng grade 6, parang 16, 17 na ako noon. Ginaanuhan pa ako niyan, sir. Ginabuksan, natingnan kung may panty. Iyan, ang dahilan, nakatigil ako. Kaya ngayon, mayabang, mayabang kaming mga nani, sir. Dahil yun, mga, mga school supplies. Dahil hindi naman talaga, totoo lang sir. Ma, maano kami, nasayahan din kami dahil ang pambuhay namin, nakakain na kami ng kanin niya madalas. Dahil noon. <laughs> Dahil sa turista? <laughs> Dahil doon sa mga... Dahil din sa turista? Oo, oh, oh, iga pang ano ba yan? Ga, pag yung mga tag-ari nga ng mga hotel na yan, ay eh, kami din ang ginakuha ang magtrabaho. And so even if it may appear as if the Atis are finally getting some justice, they'd rather the businesses stay. So, ayaw nyo na magsara? Ay, sana sir, ano? So, sa totoo lang, pabor talaga kami. <laughs> Mahal nga Pangulo nga isa na itong Buracay na ito. Dahil yun nga, ni, nakakalungkot talaga ang gawa nila. Pero, yun na lang. Na kung yun ay ang, yun ang mangyari, ay apoy nagbalik talaga kami sir sa ano, sa gapang-gapang niya. Kung, yung para lang sa mga anak namin ba sir? In a way, the sentiment of Boracay's migrant community isn't different from how the Atis feel about the situation. They may want the old Boracay back. And what better way than to ban tourism altogether? But there are mouths to feed and families to raise. For Simon Asia, I'm Barnabilo in Boracay, the Philippines.